2024 has had some unbelievably bad movies so far. So here's my list of the top five worst films of the year so far. Number five is Madam Web. The only reason that this movie is the fifth worst of the year for me is it's so entertainingly bad and terrible that you can at least laugh at how stupid it is. But yeah, this movie's terrible. And I think the biggest problem behind it is it's not even a superhero movie. The only powers you see are Madam Web herself looking about five seconds into the future a couple times throughout the movie. The other spider women, quote unquote, in the film don't even get their powers or suits in this movie. All you see is a 30 second like future vision of them wearing it. It doesn't happen in the film, which is just absolutely insane. The villain in this movie is one of the worst superhero movie villains I've ever seen in my life. First of all, his dialogue is so bad, and there's so many bad ADR lines where it's not matching up with what his mouth is saying in the movie. Like, his performance literally feels like they ripped him straight out of some soap opera somewhere and just threw him into this movie. It's just so bad. I actually think Dakota Johnson could be a good version of this character, but the character itself is just not strong enough or does not have enough lore to carry its own movie. And it shows in her performance. You can tell she doesn't care about what she's in, and she just phoning it in to get the paycheck and honestly i can't blame her at all and number four i have the garfield movie this is one of the most generic films i've ever seen in my life it's just greedy from the studio they put the most generic plot they could ever think of on the screen and just threw the garfield characters over and they knew people would eat it up the voice cast is full of celebrities i think are great actors and actually really like but i could not stand half of the voice performances in this movie specifically chris pratt as garfield himself is just such a lazy performance and i really like hannah waddingham but her as jinx was unbearable to listen to in my opinion i mentioned before but this movie is so obsessed with trying to keep the adults and the audience engaged in the movie by making jokes and references only for them that they forget to make this actually an entertaining film. Like, I don't think kids are even going to be enjoying this film. Like, literally every five minutes we're referencing something like Daniel Day-Lewis or Tinder and Bumble. Number three is Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Now listen, I know there's a lot of Zack Snyder fans out there, and I think he's done some amazing things, including his Justice League. I think that is an amazing movie, but this is absolutely unbearable and somehow worse than Part 1. There are obviously lots of elements of movies that have to work to make it a good film, but one of the most important, if not the most important, is having good characters that you can connect with and care for. I'm sorry, this is the most unmemorable cast of characters I've ever seen in my life. You don't know anything about any of them besides when they're just sitting there exposition dumping about their history to you. And when I don't care about the characters in a movie, it's really hard to get on board with anything else, especially when a lot of the other elements of this film are also pretty bad. Like, the action is just so bad in this movie. And it's mostly because Zack Snyder is obsessed with just spamming slow motion action sequences or even things of like people raking leaves are in slow motion in this movie. I don't know why he does it so much. It does not look good. Good. The other weird thing about this movie is it's a part two, so you would think it would be able to just hit the ground running and have a huge epic conclusion from everything that was set up in part one, but somehow this movie's even slower and feels less epic than the first one. Like, it still spends like the first hour of this movie setting up events that we literally already did in part one. It's just such a weird choice, and the fact that there's a longer cut of this, I just can't even imagine how painful that is to get through. At number two, Netflix is making its second consecutive appearance on the list with their original movies. This time, it's Atlas starring Jennifer Lopez. This is just so brutal. It came out last week. Don't waste your time watching it. This is another attempted sci-fi epic just like Rebel Moon but this time with a focus on AI and how it's taking over the world and is this terrible thing but Jennifer Lopez's character don't worry she's smart and she doesn't trust AI at all. Now this is actually a message I can get behind because AI is absolutely disrupting industries all over the world especially the film industry but it's super ironic for two reasons. First of all this movie is so unbelievably generic and plain it feels like it was written by AI but secondly the movie doesn't even buy into its own message because it tells you oh AI is bad and it's taking over but the entire movie is also about Jennifer Lopez has it bending with this other AI robot and trusting it. And this stupid Titanfall robot is another huge problem with this movie because half of the film is literally her just sitting in the cockpit talking to this robot. They're trying to go for like a Tony Stark and Jarvis chemistry here and it just does not work whatsoever. The humor is just so boring. Simu Liu is playing the villain in this movie and it made me realize he really needs Shang-Chi 2 to start production because he is absolutely terrible in this. I mean, I don't know how much of it is his fault because the script he's given is terrible, but his performance is not much better. Although he is a part of a hilarious moment in the movie when they try to tell you that he's older than Jennifer Lopez, even though in real life, he's obviously 20 years younger. But at number one is Megamind versus the Doom Syndicate. Now listen, I know all the rebuttals. Yes, this is just pretty much a pilot for their new series and they're just using the characters. That is part of my problem with this. It is just so greedy and lazy and disrespectful to the original movie and everybody that grew up with it. Because the first Megamind is an example of having celebrities in your voice cast and them actually giving it them all and giving really charming performances, especially Will Ferrell as the main character Megamind, but they don't bring any of these people back and the people doing the new voices are just terrible voice actors. I'm sorry. This movie came out 10 years after the original original Megamind movie also and looks 10 years older like the animation is so terrible you can tell they were just trying to make this thing as cheap as possible and hoping people are just going to eat up whatever slop they put in your plate the new doom syndicate characters are just all terrible the voice acting and their lines everything it's all bad I hate them all it's a terrible movie